Hello, so this is attempt number God knows what. Um, <laughs> I've oh, first it was space, um, memory space on my phone, second was battery, and then um, I forgot all my points that I was gonna share at some point, so I've had to redo this video like a million times. But I need to do it, I am determined because I want to share with you tips on how to deal with criticism. So criticism comes at us from everywhere. Like it could be your family, that annoying relative that's constantly putting you down. Like one time um, a cousin of mine told me, so my both my sons have been really chubby as babies and she saw my son's um, thighs and she said... <laughs> <laughs> now I laugh because I'm just like this is crazy and um, she was like oh he has fat legs like your legs I have the, like even at my fattest as at the at my heaviest you know um last year when I reached pro over to nearly 260 pounds I don't know how much that is in kilos um for those who don't understand pounds but even at my heaviest my legs are like the one thing that I can count on Anyway, so she said that and that ate away at me for years and years, which is funny because another relative had told me that my legs were too skinny and I should not be wearing skirts and that girls like me should not be wearing short skirts. Um, so, you know, these things come at you. But then I've also obviously had criticism outside of my family. I had a recent um, thing um, at a mums and tots on Thursday, um, which really bothered me because it was really ridiculous. So um, I lost my son's shoe on the way to Mums and Tots. Another woman found it for me. Um, she didn't know it was mine, but she assumed because it was so close to the church where the Mums and Tots usually is. Um, she brought it in um, to say, did anybody lose a shoe? So I'm like, yeah, it was me. I lost a shoe. Um, and we were kind of devastated because those shoes are like um, really cute. They're really comfortable. They're Clarks, you know. Um, so they they were not a cheap buy, you know, and they were also a gift um, and, um, ha and a hand-me-down from Elijah. And what I'm trying to do actually with a lot of the things that I've kind of um, reused from Elijah to Ezekiel is to keep it for them in the future. So anyway, um so this woman walks in she gives me my shoe she's really nice about it but then another woman um um don't know how this was any of her business turns around to me and oh bear in mind backstory this woman criticized me two weeks ago not gonna share what she said to me but I was just like my goodness um anyway so <laughs> she says you need to buy your son sensible shoes like the ones you're wearing oh she pauses looks down at my feet and says like the ones you're wearing because I was wearing my winter boots and um, because it had been snowing um yeah like the ones um Sorry, that paused to say that the battery was low. I hope it came through. Anyway, but she's like, you need to buy yourself, uh, your son, sensible shoes like the ones you're wearing. And um, I was just like, I, I'm a bit confused. But the frustrating thing was people laughed. And, but I did not see, you know, the connection that, you know, like, what? Anyway, so it bothered me all day. And um, not kind of, it wasn't at the front of my mind, but it was at the back and um, just really just kind of annoyed me. Um, so that evening, I had to kind of sit down with myself and kind of reflect on this thing. And um, the first thing that I did, so this is point number one on how to deal with criticism is to build yourself up so build your identity know who you are know what you're about know the things that you're you can compromise on the things that you cannot compromise on the battles which you're willing to fight you know and then um the battles that you're not gonna um get into so i did not feel the need to go into that on Thursday. I think in the future, if she does criticize me again, because it seems to be a pattern that she is, um, um, you know, she's, <laughs> she's, uh, formulating here, I will say something. But on Thursday, I was like, no, let me leave her. And I walked away because I was just like, this is ridiculous. Um, so build your identity. So, uh, I had to remind myself that I'm a great mom. This is something that I'm having to tell myself all the time. Mom guilt is real. People are going to try and criticize you. People are going to try and, you know, 
um, indirectly tell you things that um, are, you know, to put you down. Maybe you're not breastfeeding enough. Maybe you're breastfeeding too much. Maybe you're not close sleeping with your baby. Maybe, you know, so decide for yourself what you um what's important to you who you are and then and um on that same thought um sorry on that same thought um um tell yourself remind yourself of who god says you are because that is the most powerful thing in the whole wide world um if you're not religious or if you're not a christian i don't know um you know, find something, you know, that you can hold on to that is bigger than you. Because sometimes um, when you're really down and when you're really struggling, knowing knowing something bigger than yourself helps you. So for me, it's my relationship with God and what he says about me. So I had to kind of reestablish my identity Um on Thursday night and to be like I'm a good mom I'm doing the best that I can I did not have any control over that shoe falling um losing that shoe and you know whatever point number two um it is when people criticize you I'm learning when people criticize you it is a reflection on who they are not on you it's a reflection on them and this has been the most liberating thing and girls like and boys if there are any boys watching this i said this to myself all the time now it's on them if somebody calls me fat that's on you like what is it that's triggering you about me being overweight if somebody is, you know, uh, criticizing me on breastfeeding too much, that's on them. You know, is it because they didn't breastfeed their child? Like, what is it? You know, I don't need to know, but that's on them. So I'm able to kind of be like, no, I'm not taking responsibility for your mess. I'm not taking responsibility for your inadequacies. You know, and the same thing, I've realized that whenever I'm critical of someone, it's because it's triggering something in me. So remind yourself, whatever it was that triggered that woman about my losing my child's shoe, who knows, because she's a granny, she wasn't even a mommy, she's a granny, so I, anyway, but that's on her, that's not on you. Um, and then um, here I am forgetting point number three. Oh, um, point number three, point number three. Um, yeah, confront the issue if you need to um, pick your battles. Um, so, like I said, did not feel the need to um, pick this fight um, with this woman on um, on Thursday. But two weeks ago, uh, a woman's child, three-year-old child, pushed my son down on the ground and stood on top of him like... I'm not talking about like proper like was standing on top of him. So I picked up that child and brought it to its mother, angry black woman or not. I was just like, your child just did this and then went back to my child to comfort them. I should have comforted my child and then dealt with it. But listen, I was mad. So fight your, uh, find your, you know, pick the right battles. Um, but remember, it's a reflection on those people, like whatever they say to you. Um, it's not on you. Um, and then point number four is pray for yourself. Because I was reading a book um, by John Andrews. He's a great, great speaker, great writer. Oh, I actually happen to have it here. Don't look at the back. Don't look at the mess in this house. But it's called Beyond Broken. And one of the things that he talks about is sometimes life can happen. And... Um, Life can happen and it can, we can allow disappointments to become, dis di we can go from being just disappointed with a situation or a person to being a disappointed, a dis dis being in a state of disappointment all the time. And he was encouraging you to kind of deal with that, um, whatever issue it is, so that you're not kind of bringing it into every area of your life. And um, so when you pray for yourself, you're kind of releasing that into like the higher power and you're just saying, God, take care of this because I cannot do it. Um, and closely connected to that point number five is to pray for the person that's criticizing you believe it or not it works that stuff works so i'm constantly praying for people now um and um the beautiful thing about praying um for your critics or your enemies um um is that you're giving god the legal right to kind of um move 
for that person. So whatever issues that person has, God can actually do it, even if that uh, can help them sort deal with it even when they're not asking God to do it. But that's the power of intercessory prayer. Um, it's giving God the legal right to do things that other people might not be asking him to do. Um, but when you pray, you're giving him the right and he can do it. And the reason now that might sound really complex theologically, but it's because there's two forces at work. Um, there's a devil, there's evil, and there's good. And um, the devil accuses God of... Um, over protecting people and whatever and because of that then God cannot do anything without us giving him the right to do it um so he's because he's given us free will so if we're you're praying for someone and even if that person does not really is not really praying for it god can do something um for them but it also changes how you view that person god allows you to see that person um in a different light, in a loving light. Um, so I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to be BFFs with that woman, um, especially because she's establishing this pattern of criticizing me. Um, but, um, you know, I don't hate her. I can honestly say that I don't hate her. And I've had people, um, people in my family, people um, in high places, um, you know, in our denomination and um, in churches who have been, you know, offered to me, but I don't hate them and I'm making it a priority to pray for them. Um, you know, and um, yeah, so that's point number five. And then point number six is read your Bible, Christian woman, you are not gonna um, accomplish much especially in terms of inner battles and inner struggles without reading your word. Your word is like, um, the Bible is the only way that we can stay grounded and really know who we are, really know who God is, really know what's really going on in the world and this, this battle that goes on and, um, the enemy of our faith, you know, the devil and how he comes at us um, all the time. So read your Bible um, to build yourself up, to build your identity so that when evil comes and when criticism comes, unnecessary comments come, you can be like, okay, and move on and pray for them, and pray for yourself, and then, oh, going back to the praying for other people, um, your, so I've noticed, um, that intercessory prayer is the only thing that has no drawbacks in our relationship with God, so if you're praying for other people, um, you, it really keeps your relationship with God open. When we start harboring um, things and holding on to things and whatever, that channel closes. But when you start praying and releasing um, these people and releasing yourself and just putting yourself in God's hands, it keeps your relationship with God really like wide open. And um, yeah, so I encourage you to just pray. Um, so just to recap, build your identity, know who you are, what you're about, the things that you're willing to fight for, the things you're not willing to fight for um and then um remember that person that's criticizing you it's on them that's a reflection on them not on you um and then number three is pray for your enemy pray for yourself um and then read your bible oh fight your battles that was number three sorry this is all messed up i really should have like a screen <laughs> with all these things written down um how do you deal with criticism? Please let me know. Um, you know, cause just cause I have these points, it doesn't mean that, that, um, I'm the queen of dealing with criticism. I'm just learning. Um, because right up until recently, like people criticizing me would make my whole identity shatter and it would take me days, sometimes weeks to kind of build myself up again. Um, so Give me tips. Tell me how you deal with those mean people that cannot keep their opinions to themselves. Bye.